I have uh, less of a talk and more, I think it's going to be more of like a multimedia explosion. So just bear with me here. Hopefully some of this stuff will work. Um, I have a lot to say. I'm really excited to be here. And um, let's talk about some awesome ways to use video with kids in a hospital. Uh, I, all the, the things that led up to, I mean, all the talks I've seen so far tonight have been amazing and the performances as well. I think there's a lot of time between the talks. Hopefully people have noticed that. And um, my time is just ticking away, so let's just meet Kate. This is Kate. Uh, this is extreme close-up of Kate. Um, she actually just finished her cancer treatments, but let's go back to when she was first diagnosed with, I believe, Ewing sarcoma or osteosarcoma of the sacrum. Uh, she was um, 16 at the time, and um, basically she was plucked out of her normal life. And, and by the way, I never practiced this with the behind me, so excuse me, excuse me if I keep going like this. Um, she was plucked out of her life and put into um, this unnamed, you know, standard, random, generic hospital. Um, and um, it doesn't matter which one, but this is just some random one I found on Google search. So, and in some random city, okay? Now, the hospital is, uh, it's not like normal life, in case people were wondering. It's a lot lonelier, it's a lot more isolated, um, maybe even boring, maybe like a little bit less hope, maybe, um, uh, fewer friends. It's not like an ideal place to spend your teen years or your 20s or really any part of your life, but I think especially for this age group, uh, it kind of sucks. And um, before I delve any further into there, um, let's, let's suppose Kate Googled, uh, you know, teen cancer support. What can I do? Uh, what's out there for me? Well, these are some of the top results. And one of the main things that, that you see up on this list here is a site called stupidcancer.org. It's a great website. There are lots of patients on there, lots of people contributing to it. It's a vibrant community. And they've got these buttons on there, uh, these quick links. I'm all alone. I need money. I need a respite. So I clicked on the I'm all alone button because maybe people might feel alone. And this is where it led me. It's a bunch of uh, text. Now. It's again, it's great that people can communicate, but it's, um, it's text threads. And yeah, you can see some of this. <laughs> Sex is one of them. Um, you know, there's different things. I clicked on uh, one of the, this is one of the discussion topics, kind of sad. It says, anyone up to just chat? Now, I'm guessing this is a girl in a hospital somewhere. Um, she posted it on May 10th of this year. And um, she just said, you know, is, is anyone there, basically? Uh, three days later, somebody said, oh, hi. Yeah, I'd love to, love to hear your story. Can you imagine if you were in the hospital and you're 15 years old and you just got diagnosed with something and you have no idea what's going on and you're confused and lost and, and scared and you say, is anyone there? And you have to wait three days for someone to reply to you. It's just a little bit slow and inefficient. And, and here's another person saying, I'm having a hard time. Uh, I just need someone to talk about how I'm feeling after being diagnosed. I've lost all my high school friends. Uh, then, uh, that was on May 15th, and, you know, then he says down here, I wish I didn't get cancer so I could have, uh, I could have had those experiences and fun times in high school or work or anything else. And then this, um, this is how he uh, can express his emotions with a text-based community, right? This is how he can say how he feels. So let's think about this. Um, this was published in Puck Magazine in the year 1880. This is the, believed to be one of the first emergences of the smiley face, frown face emoticon. Okay, 1880. Okay, that's what we had back then. Now, 135 years later, we have this. So this is 135 years of progress in communicating our emotions. We have to be able to do better than that. This whole thing makes me feel like, like this. So. Let's go back to Kate for a second. Help me come up with something. Yeah, I have a few ideas. Great. That's me, of course. <laughs> she cut my hair for St. Baldrick's Day, and this was a video we made of her pretending to be my hairstylist. It was just goofy, there was no real purpose. But she seemed to be having fun. Okay, that's enough of that. I don't have time to show all that. Um, the point is we made a video. So what's the big deal with video? Who cares? Well, maybe some people have heard of this. This is Dr. Albert Morabian, uh, who it famously came up with this 73855 rule. Um, and it specifically applies to communicating about emotions. And supposedly, uh, when we speak and communicate, about 7% of that actually is in the words themselves. 
Another 38% requires audio. It's the intonation of our voice and the inflection in the, in the rhythm of our speech. And then the remaining 55% comes in our facial expressions and our body language and our gesticulations as we speak. So uh, I decided to just do an experiment here to demonstrate this. I'm going to show you some words um, from what another uh, cancer patient's mom who I was talking to uh, about just connecting with other parents. So first, just take about 10 seconds and read her words. Okay, now let's look at the same exact thing, but with the audio edited. Parent going through this, it's what you do. You know, and seeing another parent cry, you know, even if you can't give them up, it's okay. Okay, so now let's look at the same exact thing, but with the audio edited. Parent going through this, it's what you do. Okay, that adds a little bit more information to the scene. And now let's look at it with video. Same exact thing. You know, and seeing another parent cry, you know, even if you can't give them up, it's okay. Okay, so. That is, uh, I feel like I can kind of picture how she's feeling now. I can kind of get a sense now. I feel like I have 100% of her message now that I can see her and hear her instead of just reading the text on the page. So when I first um, asked around if it was OK if I could video some patients, a lot of the charge nurses and child life specialists and people were a little bit understandably um, hesitated about it. You know, It was as if I was asking to bring like a farm animal onto the uh, wards or something like that. Um, you know, except for the fact that they're actually alive. So. Okay, fine. I think the two main fears when people think about using video are technophobia and what I'm calling hippophobia. Not to be confused with the fear of hippos, but hippophobia. Um, and we'll come back to that later. Let's first focus on technophobia. Um, so, when I say uh, hi, is it okay if I videotape some of your patients? I think this is what people are picturing. I want to bring something like this into the room. Or maybe they're picturing like this kind of a studio. Okay, I don't need that. That's not what I'm asking for. That would be ridiculous and complex. Okay, actually what I'm talking about when I want to make a video with a patient is one of these. Does anybody in the room have, by show of devices, Something like this in their pocket. Let's see how many people have either an iPhone or an Android or any kind of thing that m maybe has video capability. Okay, I see uh, most of them uh, are being raised out there. This is what I'm talking about when I mean let's, um, you, let's make a video with patients. It's not very uh, involved. So that was a quick survey. So most of us, I'm going to conjecture, are walking video studios. And I'll show you just a little bit of how. Um, and by the way, keep those out. We may use them later if there's time. So keep them handy. Okay, so let's see here. Video is a tool for patient and parent. Uh, these are the four categories that I'm really focusing on. Entertainment, advocacy, connection, and happiness. So let's see some examples. Well, uh, I'm not going to show all these now, but this is my little suite of uh, Video Peach apps that I have on my iPhone. Each of these things is a different kind of little fun thing you can do with the video camera on your phone to entertain someone, to pass a few minutes of time of boredom, and some of them you can go for hours with. Um, you can, of course, film a video and, and edit it right there using iMovie on your phone. If you have an iPhone, this is the actual editing software on the phones these days. You don't have to have it on the computer. Um, so you can uh, add sounds, you can cut things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is something called VidRhythm. It's an app where, uh, I was going to demonstrate it, but in the interest of time, uh, I won't. You basically record your mouth going boom, and then going tsh, and then going tsh, all the different noises of the, of the drum set, and then it automatically, in, in seconds, or, uh, or orchestrates it into this multiple layered, like, audio awesome remix thing. It's so fun. Um, and it's, I don't know, maybe 99 cents. Here's one called Animate Me, where you take uh, still images of yourself or your friends or your family or your doctors and nurses, and you can add a bunch of props to them, and then you can create these um, scripted animations. So the mouths actually move. It's kind of like Jib Jab, if anybody has ever seen that. Anyone can do it from their phone. Again, maybe, I don't know, $2, $3 free. These don't cost a lot of money. And then, of course, you have Google Hangouts. Now, a lot of people use Skype or FaceTime to make a video call to someone else. And that's great. That'll get you a one-to-one -one conversation. Um, Google Hangouts lets you have multiple people chatting at once in the same time. And I think there's so much potential with that. I'm sure it's the, the technology is going to get smoother uh, as time goes by. So uh, let's go back to this girl who said, is anyone up to just chat, right? That was on May 10th, and she had to wait for three days to hear back from someone. Well, imagine with, with the miracle of Google Chat, 
uh, or Google Hangouts, we can add her. I've added her into the lower right corner here. So now she's joined this conversation and she has people to chat with her right then, live. Uh, if you think of that uh, uh, first video we saw by um, uh, Sherry, Sherry Turkle, she was talking about uh, this exact thing, how we can actually connect with each other and be less lonely. So um, let's keep moving, let's keep pushing forward here. So uh, advocacy, this is an interview with a girl who is uh, six years old. How old is she? Five years old. And where did you go to school? Preschool. Super shy, super oh, sweet. Her name is Mariah. And you know, we, we gave her some uh, props and wigs, and I'll explain about that later. It wasn't a big deal. We just were going back and forth asking her questions, 20 questions. So simple. Okay? And then after we did that, uh, a few minutes later, she wanted to <laughs> sing Frozen with us. Okay? And um, you can't really appreciate it on here, but uh, my friend Tony kind of like edited the movie superimposed over her and we let her watch that so it was like she was in the movie. She had a ton of fun and afterwards, as shy as she appears, she actually was asking her mom, when can we do it again? Uh, when can we come back? And during the interview, when, when she was asked why she's at the hospital, her answer was to make a video, which is very sweet. <laughs> um, this is an amazing guy. His name's Kenneth or Ken or Cool Ken, Big Ken. So uh, he's in here, he was in here um, pretty recently. I was just interviewing him. He had um, a chondroblastic uh, osteosarcoma of the mandible and just had jaw surgery and got replacement of part of his mandible. Um, okay, so I just spoke over it, but he was talking about um, how much he just likes people coming by and talking to him. It's very simple and uh, it's not too difficult of a concept. So I would love to, you know, one day maybe everyone will will be able to meet him, it would be amazing, but not yet. So what does uh, HIPAA stand for? Anybody know? HIP, HIP what, health, health information, no. To me, HIPAA stands for get that video camera out of here, okay? Yes, technically it stands for the Health Information Portability Privacy something yeah. Act, okay, oh yeah. Okay, um, and it, it is important to, to give patients the opportunity to have privacy of their information if that's what they want. But I think at the same time, and no one really talks about this, uh, the opposite is true too. So I developed, and I'm hereby presenting to you, the opposite of HIPAA, APIP. <laughs> that stands for Access to Audiovisuals for Patients in Hospitals. And every patient deserves that. As much as they deserve privacy, if they want that, they also deserve a platform and a voice and a way to connect with the outside world if they want that. And I think it's a right of every patient to have that. And it's unbelievable to me that they frankly don't have that. So we need to change that. Um, another thing video can do is it's a tool for connection. I wonder if this is going to play. But they don't physically know what it's like to wake up in the morning and have to do their daily routine or, you know, have to sit in this room. It's like, you get to go home. Like, you may spend the night with me, but you get to go home here that I'm stuck here for another eight days. And I think when you see other people going through that, it's like, could they get what I'm going through? They, they have to do the same exact thing I do. Maybe it might be a little different, but they, they're the ones that are doing that. And I think that through video, that will help people. So, Caitlin's mom is the one who we saw earlier. Um, talking about connecting with parents. I think it just kind of goes without saying that uh, she really wants to be able to connect to people who are like her and who are going through what she's going through. And then finally, video is a tool for happiness. And again, this kind of goes without saying, I don't know how this picture of my daughter got in here, but uh, <laughs> okay, so you'll have to look at that. Uh, so let's, take, let's just sum these things up real quick. Video is a tool for patient entertainment, advocacy, connection, and happiness. And so we, we went to the drawing boards and we stared at this for a while and we realized that it spells something out. P-E-A-C-H. And from that, we invented Video Peach. Video Peach's goal is everything that we've just been talking about. Let me just give you a little bit of an example. Here's that crazy studio that we can't fit into rooms, right? And clip it right on to my IV pole and it will hold my iPad for me. No big deal, no crazy stuff. Basically what I'm getting at is that every um, patient room has the tools in it already to make videos. We don't need to have ask hospitals to buy all kinds of crazy equipment. Okay, this has a nice nifty ball and socket joint so I can video the whole room. Look, hey mom and dad, there's me, there's my doctors, there's my nurses, there's my meds. Okay, I can wheel it down the hallway with me. Hey, 
guess what? I'm on for uh, round 18 of chemo. Here we go. Okay, I can take it with me wherever I go. Um, very simple to do. Uh, this is a lip dub that we made. We just had foot surgery. It was only five days ago. Okay, so this is right from his hospital room. He's, as you can see, he's lying in the hospital bed, and we get to make it into a news studio, like Daily Show or like anything else. Um, that black area behind him that started showing the news thing actually came from this. This will be fun. I'm going last so I can make a mess. Um, this was like $40, you see, and it unfolds into this. So we can put this right behind anyone's hospital bed, and then this can become anything they want it to be, whether it's a news desk, uh, an island, Antarctica, a mountain, a uh, concert arena. We can put them anywhere they want to be, right from their hotel, uh, hospital room. <laughs> more like a hotel room. Making it more like a hotel room because it's more comfortable. Okay, let's throw this down here since so uh, I'm gonna block the whole thing. Okay, so uh, where did I put my remote? Here it is. Okay. This is an outdoor festival that we participated in. Blah, blah, blah. We are doing a lot of fun stuff. And it's exciting, and um, we're connecting with patients, and it's not that hard to do is my message. Um, this is me trying to say uh, part of our dream is that one day we'll be in different hospitals and pretend this is just another hospital somewhere in the city, right? And uh, we can spread to other hospitals and have a video peach mobile thing in each hospital that they can use to connect patients who are not just on the same hallway, but who are in the nearby hospitals or across the country or across the globe. Um, I want there to be a video peach in every, in every children's hospital, right? And a video peach, because I'm going to eventually make this look like a peach, is something that you can wheel to the patient's room on demand, on call. We can have our own pager, and we can bring our stuff. And let's see what's in here, by the way. I didn't even open this thing. I've got this crazy thing, right? I have hats for you. I've got beards for you. I've got sunglasses for you. I've got um, plenty of wigs and uh, props and mustaches, of course. You can have contests throughout the entire country or through the globe, the people making simple video contests, stuff like that. Um, so there's a sense of a community. Collaborations between staff and patients, right? We got about APHI. Each patient has the right to their own video camera and their own video blog or YouTube channel. It's a right. I really think it is. And it's a shame that we're not offering it yet. We need to. Video support groups with live video chats. Imagine Thursday night teen osteosarcoma support group and people from all around the country who have that can join together and talk with each other. Thank you.